Welcome back to the Matt Yasa channel. I'll be doing a full chain necklace for this video. The color is called Blue Stardust. Check it out. So this project does require a bit of prep work. It does speed things along a little bit if you cut the rods ahead of time. And I'm dipping my cutting tool in the water for each cut. This helps the process along with traps the glass dust. So this green rod is from the previous chain video. It's what I used for the chain I'm wearing right now. And I'll go ahead and use it as the cutting guide for all my links. One thing you don't want to do, which I did in the last video, was use the new cut rod for the next guide. Because each fresh cut might be a little bit off. So you want to stick with the original rod, or else you might end up deviating the length after a while. So to do these links, I'm going to give it a nice even heat, a nice core heat. I want it just about ready to move on its own, but not quite. And then I'm going to keep reheating that area as I slowly bend it into place. If I heat it up a little bit too much and gravity gets a hold of it, it's going to start to get a bit wonky. So I'm trying to just keep it right at that level below that. Now you could use some more shaping tools to speed up the process. Maybe a graphite rod or a metal rod to wrap the glass around to make the bend. But I like this process for practice. For a beginner, it's good to learn temperature control and how the glass likes to move around when it gets hot. So since I like to tell other people to practice this technique, I'm gonna just use it as a warm up myself. It's been a little bit since I've been really on the torch, since the uh, weather has been kind of bad this winter. And now I'm just removing the rest of that clear glass that was from the punty. This is going to be the first link here and it's going to be a little different than the rest. I'm going to start off by closing it up and making it a closed link. And if you don't get that clear out of there, before you close it up, you'll end up with a ring of clear. But honestly, it'd probably be very hard to notice unless you're a flame worker yourself. Uh, but that's kind of what we are about, is minute details. And so when you are practicing this, it's good to remember to take your time. You try to get each link uh, shaped exactly the way you want. I know during the learning process, you might feel rushed to get things produced, get things out there, but there's gonna be a lot of cracks and broken pieces at the start, so you really just have to be patient with it. Once you start to understand the process and kind of understand how the glass and flame work together, you can make whatever you want and hopefully it will last the test of time. You know, the glass is actually quite durable. As long as you don't drop it onto something as hard as itself, you should be fine. And that tends to be why these chains are so fragile. You know, dropping one link on a hard surface might not actually break it, but several links on any surface will collide together and break themselves. But that's not to say it can't be easily repaired. Broken links can be replaced pretty easily. And if it isn't cracked all the way through on both sides, you might even be able just to reheat the crack and fix it. They'll often say it's not all about what you can make, but what you can fix or what you can save. And so this rod is called Blue Stardust from Tag Glass. It's a transparent blue cobalt and it is packed with a metal sparkle. 
It's really nice uh, outdoors, really beautiful in the sun. And I'll go ahead and check that bend with the first link I made to make sure it's the same shape. And I'll go ahead and put them together and seal it up to start off the chain. So you might have noticed I've rotated the punty around to the back side. That was just a quick connection there that I'll talk about in a little bit here. But for right now, it's good to heat up a little bit lower than the ends of the rods. You'll see I'm kind of heating up more of the ends and it's causing them to gather up into spheres. But that's okay. We can always move the glass around and in the end it will be the same link anyway. There's usually always more than one way to get to the same end result. That's especially true in glass blowing. Looking at a finished work, it's sometimes hard to know the steps they took to get there. Unless they left any kind of marks in the glass that would let you know. You just kind of have to base the guess on the process itself. Like, how would you make it? But from here on, I'll just keep adding new links and melding them together. However, the first few are definitely the most difficult. Once you start creating a long chain, you have something to hold on to. But for right now, I gotta be very careful not to fling that link into the hot glass. If they were to collide together, even for a moment, they would begin to melt together and become stuck. So as I heat it up, you can see that nice gradient of heat. It's very bright orange. That's where it's the hottest, and that dull red is where it's the coolest. It kind of follows that inverse square law where the intensity of an effect is inversely proportional to the distance from the effect. But speaking of effects, the process does have a bit of effect on the body, especially dehydration, so it's good to have something to drink with you. Yeah, it's probably good to drink from something covered rather than a mug. That way you don't get any glass in it. But I usually keep my mug like really far away from my desk anyway. And so I'll do some prep work here by bending a bunch of links ahead of time. And you can also see here I'm attaching the punty to the back to make it easier for the assembly process. And it does help to have something to stick the punties in to hold them upright, like a brick with some holes drilled into it. For most cases, you don't want to rest your hot glass on hard surfaces, especially conductive ones like metal or a graphite plate. The surface will rapidly suck the heat out of the glass, which will induce some stress, causing it to crack later. For these links, since they're so thin, they should be fine just bench cooling like this in the air. I will anneal everything in the kiln once the chain is finished, once it's 100% complete. And now this is a fireproof Kevlar pad. It's definitely not normally used like this, just for this particular project. I'm going to use it uh, to prevent any broken links in case uh, something breaks and falls. You know, for marbles or hollow work or really anything, I never have it on my desk like this, but I just really hate breaking links. It just feels like a lot of time wasted. I mean, I normally don't have too much trouble anymore since I've practiced it so much, uh, but just in case, you know, it doesn't hurt. And so I'm starting to bend this link closed here. And as you're bringing the two ends together, you want it as molten as possible. You know, you want a very hot connection. If you do it cold, you might end up trapping air and it won't look as smooth. And that pretty much goes for most connections. 
or anytime you want to bring two separate pieces of glass together to make one piece, you want to do it as hot as possible. And a good tip here to note is I'm holding two punties in my left hand. I like to keep that second one attached, at least for the first quarter or so of the chain until I can actually reach it with my hand. And that's of course to keep the cold links from falling forward into that molten one and melting together. And so I'm going to skip ahead here a little bit to about halfway through the project. And I wanted to share this little tip, uh, applying a little bit of the colored glass I'm using to the punties. That way when I remove the punties later, it'll leave behind more colored glass that I can just melt in. And it's actually a great tip for cold punties. It helps the cold punty break off a little easier. And then as long as you match the color to the marble or whatever the cold punch is on, you can just melt it right in. But for this chain, I actually went hot punty all the way. I didn't do any cold punties. And so now you can see the chain has progressed long enough for me to easily hold on to. I'm gonna pull back on the shaping tools and use entirely gravity. That is after I connect the ends with the tweezers. You now, gravity is a really great tool to use. I think only second to your hands, of course. I always say your hands are the best tool to practice with. The first one you need to focus on. And so with that, I'll go ahead and hold it at a slightly downward angle and keep rotating. This will melt the glass, condense it, bring it together, and then gravity will help pull it down into that nice loop shape. And so if I were to tilt it more towards the floor, like straight down, it'll start to pull the loop out more, kind of thinning it out. But if I tilt it more level or more up, then it will start to condense back and thickening the loop. So finding that correct angle and with good heat control, you can form up that loop without using really any tools at all. I'll go ahead and turn my torch down here to a smaller flame to detach the punty from the second to last link. The next link I do will be the final one that will fully complete the chain. So you can see that tiny flame going to work there. That's one of the things I love about these uh, surface mix torches. They just feel very versatile. I normally like to adjust the flame size to match the area of glass I'm trying to heat up. So if I'm trying to melt through a one inch rod, for example, I'd open it up to about a one inch flame. Because if you, you know, en envelop the glass entirely in the flame, you know, you're going to heat it up as quick as you can. If you open it up even more to maybe a two inch, three inch flame, you know, it's not going to actually heat through the glass any quicker as the temperature of the flame is dependent on the mixture of the fuel and oxygen and not the size. So as a flame gets larger, you just increase the volume or the area of heat not necessarily the temperature of the heat. And the reason I do that is really just to save on propane, you know, just to keep from burning uh, propane that's not really needed. But then the oxygen source is a little bit different. It's coming from an oxygen concentrator. I've been running a 10 liter per minute concentrator for this whole video. I definitely recommend those concentrators, uh, especially for practice. You can get a lot done and with the ease of just flipping a switch, you really can't beat it. And here it is, the almost finished chain. The very last thing to do before I finish it all together is to check the direction of the links for any twists. And the second to last two links are parallel or facing the same direction, uh, opposite from the very last link. And that way each link will change direction all the way around the chain. 
so it really is a lot of work and also very time consuming. This one here is probably a little bit over 10 hours to do. It did take a little bit longer with managing the cameras, having to start and stop them and recharge the batteries and stuff. But overall, this project really wasn't about speed or getting it done quickly. It's more about taking time, you know, having patience, and getting the finished product uh, exactly like you want it. And then if you keep practicing, over time you'll gradually start to speed up and you'll stop thinking so much about the certain ways you have to move to get the glass to move. It'll just come naturally, just like reading a book. And now here's a close-up shot on the GoPro. You'll notice it's melted in just a little bit there on the ends. And that's really all you need is just to tag them together. And now that they're connected, tagged together like that, I can go back in the flame and melt it down to a nice even rod. And that's a good way to keep from trapping air between the glass. You know, start a little bridge and melt it thicker rather than just having two big globs come together at once. And as I'm looking at this link, I realized it is a little bit too big. I forgot to measure it properly. What happened was I ran out of rods to cut, so I combined two of the ends together to create a rod. But then I forgot to measure it. It ended up a little bit too big, both those ends. But that's okay. I'll just go ahead and pull the loop out to remove a bit of glass, and then I'll shape up the last link there. And I'll save that bit too, and use it in a different project. This colored glass is real expensive. These high quality rods are about $60 a pound. They come with a perfectly mixed color and a very even rod diameter. So it's great for making chain. But there are some ways to stretch your colored glass a little bit further. For example, if you lay some colored glass over a rod of clear and then melt it in very evenly and stretch it out, you can pretty much double the quantity of glass you have. And now this works much better for opaque or solid colors than it does for transparent ones like this one. It just look a little bit less saturated, kind of like watered down. So it'd be a slight tint of blue and not like a full body dark blue right here. But then the opposite is true when you gather it up. You know, as it gets thicker and thicker, that coloring agent will end up reflecting more light so it just ends up getting darker and darker. So again, this is the very last link to complete the chain, and I figured I'd save the most footage for the last here, the most details. This is the hardest part after all. I have two links inside of this one instead of just one, so I have to be twice as careful. And there's a little bit less room for tools also, so when you do this yourself, you have to make sure to make the links long enough that you can finish it without melting them all together. So I just need to round out this last link, take off the punty, and kneel it, and it'll be complete. But before that happens, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for checking out this video so far. The weather has been rolling back in my favor. I wanted to definitely get into the routine of more uploads. I do have a lot of interesting videos planned, so it's definitely not a lack of inspiration. Just, uh, just gotta get it done. And oh, I kinda dropped it into the hot link there for just a moment. So I'm pretty lucky they didn't melt together. If the link is cold enough, they actually won't fuse together by a quick touch like that. But something like that could definitely be enough to shock that cold link. So if it cracks right there before I get it into the kiln, I really wouldn't be surprised. So I'm going to turn my flame down to a tiny pinpoint flame here. It's a very small, very efficient flame. If you adjust your flame as you need it, and also turn it down when you're not really using it, you'll find the fuel can really go a long way. Most people will use the 15 to 20 pound propane tanks 
the ones that you would use for a barbecue grill. And on a small torch or with small flames like this, it should really last you a couple months. I mean, it just kind of depends on how much you use it and how large your projects are. You'll go through the oxygen much more quickly. You use it in a higher ratio to fuel and it can be a little bit harder to find a supplier for oxygen refills. Propane though is usually pretty easy to find. You can pick it up at most gas stations or grocery stores. I'd recommend the hardware store myself. And that's kind of why I went with the oxygen concentrators. You can't beat uh, just flipping a switch to get a fresh supply of oxygen. So now that I've removed the punty, I just have to finish up the very last loop here. And with the two links there, I can't really hold it upside down to finish it. It's kind of falling at an angle. Uh, so I'm gonna just use the tweezers and finish it up. And it's looking good. It's looking pretty much done. I hope it fits over my head though. I did make it a little bit shorter than this green one. And I have a kind of a big head. Now for the kilning process, I find it's easier to lay it in a cold kiln. It's just a little bit too much to handle to try to place it gently in a hot kiln. Ooh, yeah, it's looking nice. A deep cobalt blue, still very shiny though. And the links are nice and even too. Now it's time to try it on and see if it fits. Chain complete.